graphic design in GL maps um, beyond zoom levels and raster tiles. Uh, so actually, really quickly, uh, just out of curiosity, how many people here have played with Mapbox GL before? OK, uh, wow, a lot of people. Um, great, so um, OpenGL technology, um, it's kind of been around for a while, but um, it's pretty new in the mapping world. Um, so I really, um, really want to focus on this talk about um, the fact that GL maps really extend the capabilities of an interactive map and what it really means for a map to be interactive. And so I'm mostly going to talk, I mean, there's a lot of similarities in styling a GL map with styling a server-side rendered map, but I'm going to focus on the th differences and like how to style the things that are really, I would, um, I would describe as like extended functionality of a web map. Can everyone hear me still? Good? OK, great. Um, so I'm Nikki. I work at a company called Mapbox. I'm um, a cartographer slash designer. Um, and um, I'm not a developer at all, but I've been fortunate enough to get to play around with Mapbox GL since, uh, you know, style spec number one. So it's been, it's been really fun and really interesting. And um, so I'm going to kind of structure this talk um, by kind of comparing GL, uh, styling for GL um, rendered maps with styling for server-side rendered maps, just because I think, um, well, first of all, I think um, most people who have experienced styling maps probably are used to styling server-side rendered maps. So I think um, that will be like a nice uh, point of comparison or a good frame of reference. And also, I kind of think um, that this is going to be kind of a practical problem to solve soon. I'm thinking that you know, at some point, a lot of people are going to want to um, move their whole stack over from server-side rendered maps to client-side rendered maps. So you know, how do you move your styles over? And hopefully, this talk will just um, kind of touch on a few of the points you might want to think about. And so I'm, gonna, so I'm speci specifically going to be discussing Mapbox GL styles. Um, versus Cardo CSS styles, and that's just because that's what I'm familiar with. Um, some of um, what I'm talking about is probably going to be pretty general to styling with an OpenGL renderer, so um, hopefully that will be applicable regardless. And so um, just to backtrack a little bit, um, so GL uh, as an OpenGL is a cross-platform API for rendering vector graphics client side using the GPU. And Mapbox GL is built on top of OpenGL, and it renders map tiles client side. So um, what this means is you can render map tiles dynamically. And specifically what that means is you can change the map in real time, um, like literally 60 frames per second. So we're talking very dynamic. And um, so that kind of gives GL maps a lot of capabilities. I'm really going to be mostly focusing on some of the fundamentals, um, namely that a GL map can be seamlessly zoomed in and out. Um, you can rotate a GL map, and you can uh, sort of dynamically transition map styles. And so this is just a little demo. I'm sure a lot of you were at Vlad's talk, so you probably saw a lot of GL demos. But um, just a little refresher. So. Um, this is a GL map um, seamlessly being zoomed. I, my Wi-Fi was a little slow when I took this animation, so it's more seamless than this, usually. <laughs> um, yeah, so you can see, you can zoom in seamlessly. You can rotate the map. Um, and um, also dynamically transition the map style, and that could be like one or two features changing, or it could be like the whole map changing. And so, and of course, there's like a lot of other really, really cool things you can do with GL maps. I'm not really going to talk about a lot of this stuff, and Vlad actually showed a lot of examples of some of this stuff, so it's just there's a lot of cool things you can do. Um, and then, um, I'm so when I talk about a Mapbox GL style, um, which is you know, what we feed into the Mapbox renderer, that's really just a JSON object. So 
th so the style sheet itself is actually very, very simple. And uh, just so as a point of comparison, so Carta CSS, um, how many people are, have experience with Carta CSS? OK, great. That's what I thought. Um, so yeah, so as a point of comparison for anyone who uh, might not know, Carta CSS is a map styling language based on CSS and less.js, uh, which is a CSS preprocessor. Um, so Carta CSS compiles Mapnik XML style sheets, and those get fed into Mapnik, which is a cross-platform rendering toolkit written in C++. And um, as I kind of mentioned, uh, Mapnik renders map tiles server side versus GL, which renders uh, client side. And uh, so this is just kind of like the two parallel workflows I'm going to kind of be comparing. On the top is Mapbox GL, and on the bottom is like Carta CSS to Mapnik. And um, I'm also, um, really my talk is kind of centered around two kind of very important perspectives. Um, the first is a design perspective, as in like, how is it different to style a dynamically rendered map? Um, and by that I mean, um, this is like, this is really like a very big paradigm shift, I think. Um, we're talking about kind of like an interactive map almost as it's like a single entity, a single object. You can almost like touch it, you can move it around, rotate it. And it's like very different than thinking about server-side rendered maps, um, which are almost like you could think of them as a bunch of static maps kind of stacked on top of each other. So like you really think, have to think about how the different layers of a um, GL map um, work together in a totally different way. And so the other really important perspective too is just from a technical perspective, um, uh, Vlad kind of touched upon this. You know, the GPU renders graphics in very, a very different way, a very difficult way. And so, so some of the um, ways you have to style a GL map are kind of directly related to that. And so I thought that I would kind of walk through the rest of my talk um, kind of um, taking a Cardo CSS style that I designed and um, translating it to a Mapbox GL and kind of like walking through a couple of the interesting points on that. So here's like a really, really simple Cardo CSS base map. So I just did a little animation zooming in so you can kind of see what it looks like at the different zoom levels. Um, so this is just a simple base map that's based on a vector tile data source um, based on open street map data. So it's just, you know, got some place labels, um, roads, rivers, um, parks, buildings, not that much else. Oh, and points of interest. Um, oh, by the way, um, the, the OpenStreetMap conference is coming up in June in New York. If anyone is interested in like open like community mapping. Um, I use a lot of OpenStreetMap data um, to make base maps, both in um, Mapbox GL and in Cardo CSS. So like that's something I'm really excited about. Um, but yeah, so this is my base map in Cardo CSS. And so then I created the same base map as closely as possible with Mapbox GL. And so I just like made a little animation um, zooming in through this map as well. And just kind of demonstrating the same, you know, GL um, capabilities. Sorry, I made my animations really long. <laughs> So I'm going to kind of jump right into talking about styling features, um, as in like groups of objects from your data source, because that's really like the meat of any um, style, map style, whether it's like a Cardo CSS style or a Mapbox uh, GL style. 
Um, and by styling features, I mean like defining a group of um, data objects and then writing rules that say what these, um, these objects in this group should look like. And so um, it like, seems like most of you guys are familiar with Cardo CSS. So that's um, you know, what we would consider like a style block in Cardo CSS. And that's pretty um, directly equivalent to uh, what we'd call like a GL layer. So it's basically just like a little chunk of code that is specific to styling a group of features. So you know, really simple Cardo CSS code block there. And this is the equivalent in uh, Mapbox GL style. Um, so it's basically just an object within the larger object. Um, you know, does the same thing, defines the data, defines uh, what property and what value you're gonna assign that property. And so um, I'm really, really, at this point, gonna focus mostly on uh, styling for seamless zoom levels, because I think that's probably, like in terms of like basic things about GL, the single most important and single most different thing. You know, so for um, Cardo CSS, of course, like you also style for zoom levels, um, and you do that with filters. Um, so, you know, something like this, you'd um, define a zoom level range and explicitly define the value for that property at that range. Um, and then you would do that with all the zoom levels that you want a different value for. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, Zoom level um, styling works a little bit differently in GL, or actually a lot differently, I guess. Um, so in GL, you style um, with functions um, that describe how a value changes across your zoom levels. And so this is an example of a function. And this looks very similar to the Cardo CSS that I just showed. I pretty much literally translated the Cardo CSS to a function. And so you can see the function is just this object with um, this stops key, and, and it has an array of arrays. And these arrays are really just these um, a pair of values. The first one describes the zoom level. The second one describes the value of the property. So you can see you know, zoom level 3, the um, value is 0 0.5, all the way down to zoom level 12, the value is 5. So that looks pretty similar to the Cardo CSS filters. Um, but the really uh, cool thing about functions is, so for example, this function here, which is much simpler and much faster to write, is um, visually like exactly equivalent to the other function I just showed. So I'll just put them side to side. And so you can see um, basically that simpler function is really just the first and the last um, of these like arrays. And so, so like, how are they the same? So that's really all to do with what happens between these stop values, right? Which is something it's not really, it's kind of a non-issue in Cardo CSS. You just jump from one value to the other. There's no, there's nothing to um, transition between. So in GL, um, this is an example of a function. This is actually the function that I sh just showed, um, this one here. So this is a function um, on a graph. You can see you know, the first blue dot represents that first stop, the second one, the second stop. And you can kind of see that line showing how the value changes across all your zoom levels. And so you can kind of guess here like what's happening you know, between those two uh, values that you've um, declared. And you can see um, it's interpolating the values so, um, and in a linear fashion. So that's, I think, really, really cool. So, I feel like compared to like what you might have to do in a Cardo style, you've just saved yourself a lot of time. And this is not just um, interpolating values for every integer zoom level, it's interpolating for like every like sub zoom level at every frame of your you know, dynamically changing map. So this is, um, I feel like um, you're doing a lot more with very little code. And so, um, but this is kind of like the really quick, easy answer to like, how does map, like how does Mapbox GL transition between like different two values? Um, there's a much longer answer, which I'm going to try to go through. Not too, I won't take too long to answer it. Um, but there's a few different types of styling properties in Mapbox GL, and so they um, get rendered in different ways. 
And so the first is uh, paint properties, and those kind of sound what, like what they are. They're properties that change the like, visual appearance of a feature, so like colors, widths, text sizes, those kind of things. Um, so these um, properties, um, the values for these properties get interpolated and calculated every frame. Um, so that's 60 frames per second. So these are the properties that really are very, very dynamic in a uh, GL map. Um, and these are the ones that like constantly get recalculated as you're zooming in around your map. The second type of properties are layout properties, and those, um, they also sound like what they are. They're properties that affect the layout of features, so like where they're placed, whether they're visible or not. And so um, the values for these properties actually only get calculated once per uh, tile, when, uh, once for each tile when the tile is initially loaded um, to the client. And so um, new tiles get loaded at every like, integer zoom level. So these um, properties um, have values that only get recalculated once every integer zoom level. And then there's also two types of values that these properties can take. So numerical values, um, you know, basically like continuous value ranges. And that includes color since color can, you know, um, is defined in numerical values. And then uh, the other type is non-numerical. And so that's all the discrete values, um, like enumerators. And then that also includes uh, Booleans and text strings. So these are, also, these are all the non-continuous values. And so these are the things that are like, it's not obvious how you would interpolate between these values, right? Um, so here's just a little chart to show so to you um, what how the renderer interprets the values or transitions between values for the different types of um, properties and values. So paint, numerical paint values get interpolated every frame render. Those are the ones that are really dynamic. Uh, the layout properties, the numerical layout properties also get interpolated, but they only get interpolated at integer zoom levels. And then the non-numerical properties um, basically are like piecewise functions, so they're basically like sub-functions stuck together because there's not really a way to interpolate between them. So um, I'm just going to show kind of all of those in a little example, which is um, a, like a style block or like a GL layer for city labels. So um, if, if you like, have experience designing base maps, you probably made a similar style like this before, where at low zoom levels, um, and I'll just run this, um, at low zoom levels, there's a dot and an offset text to represent a city, because you know, there's not enough space to like, accurately show where the city is um, without the dot. And then at you know, mid to high zoom levels, that dot goes away. The text represents like, exactly the point, the data point of that city. And so um, this is something. Um, <laughs> So when I first started working with uh, Mapbox GL styling, like, I don't know, maybe like nine months ago, like with style spec V1, like this was something you, like this right here was something you absolutely couldn't do. Like there was a lot of things, you know, um, that sort of slowly got introduced. So we're now at V7. And I'm really excited that you can do something as simple as this. But um, it kind of involves a lot of different moving parts of a lot of different properties. So um, I don't know if you guys can read down there. So I'm going to talk about like how icon size, text offset, and text transforms are changing in this like little style here. So icon size, and I um, exaggerated the size of the icon so that you guys could see it. Um, so this is, um, you know, this is a uh, numerical paint property. So this is something that's dynamically changing. So I'm hoping that because the icon's big enough, you can see that it's really like shrinking like seamlessly um, as you zoom into the map. Um, I also, uh, the icon opacity and text size is also something that's changing dynamically on that example. And um, sorry, I hope you guys like graphs. I have a lot of graphs. Um, but <laughs> so, this is, uh, so this is the graph of that um, property uh, or that function for that property. And you can kind of see it's similar to the one I just showed um, before. It's a linearly interpolated. Um, a function, and so like I said, that's like kind of what I just showed already. 
text offset is um, is a layout property since it affects like the position of where the text is on the map. And so that's not that's something that only gets interpolated once every integer zoom level. So I kind of exaggerated again this, the size of the offset so that um, you could kind of see as this zooms in that it's not quite as seamless as that first example. You can kind of see uh, like right there, like little jumps. Um, you know, and it's not that obvious when I style it um, in a non-exaggerated way, but you can really see it here. And so the graph for that function looks like that. And so you can really see, um, it's, yeah, it's basically just calculating the value at every integer zoom level. Um, it's, still, it's still different than Cardo CSS because you don't have to define each integer, integer zoom level. You could still define like zoom level one and zoom level 20, and it will still interpolate all of those values for you. It just won't interpolate uh, non-integer zoom levels. And so, um, I, and I kind of just wanted to stress that point because, um, you know, we talk a lot about how with GL you can, you know, re-render your map dynamically, you know, 60 times per second, but, you know, it's still, you want to make your map as dynamic as possible, but you still also want to make it as fast as possible. So, you know, that's like really why like these layout properties are not calculated for every frame. You know, you still want the map to be fast, you know, so we're not going to change everything at every frame, you know? And the other thing about it that I, um, I kind of from a design perspective, um, when I first started styling GL, I got like really, really excited about the seamless zooming and, you know, decided like every single thing I styled all had to be like seamlessly interpolated and seamless, seamless. And, you know, there's also really a limit to what your eyes can even detect anyway. And so after months and months of waiting to be able to kind of create that city dot style that I just showed, um, you know, in a lot of cases, something that just has a jumping transition kind of like this, um, like maybe works just as well. I don't know. Um, but it's just there's a lot of different options when you're talking about how you are going to go, how you are going to transition from one style to the next. And a lot of it, like this is kind of like showing you one feature in isolation, but a lot of it has to do with kind of the other features that are around it. Like, is a, are a lot of other things coming in and out of the scene at the same time? You know, and, and so seamlessness is kind of, um, you know, it's not like a hard set thing. It's kind of visually interpreted in different ways. Um, and then really quickly, I just wanted um, there was that third type of function, the piecewise function that um, basically just um, puts two subfunctions together and just switches them without a transition. So that's, this is basically just an example of that. Um, it's upper lowercase text switching to uppercase text. Um, this is something I do a lot in Cardo CSS. So um, like the first things I did was try to like recreate a lot of the feature styles I did in Cardo in MathLoxGL. And that's what that graph looks like. You can see it's basically just two functions. And um, just quickly to, um, it, like any kind of um, function that involves images, like patterns, icons, um, those are also all piecewise because you, know, you can't really interpolate between two files. Um, what you can do is crossfade the images. So that's what's going on here. Um, there's a crossfade with a, a time duration, like time transition that you can um, kind of assign a transition duration to. So I hope it's a little bit hard to see. I, try, I actually tried to purposely style this map really like garishly so you could see it on the projection. Um, but it still might be a little hard to see. Um, I made the duration of the transition really slow so that you could hopefully see the images swapping out. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go back a step and go back to talking about interpolation um, because I only touched upon half of um, what that really means and the other half I'm really, really excited about. It's probably like the most exciting thing to me about styling in MathOxGL um, and that is exponential functions. So um, well, going back to that first initial example, uh, country boundary line width 
And here is like a linear um, interpolated um, value. Um, and that works for, I, I find that works for country boundaries a lot on base maps. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of features on maps that like a linear um, transition doesn't really work very well. Um, one of the best examples I think is um, road, roads or any kind of like network of like really complex uh, geometry. So like if you want to have like a, like a good data density on like a low zoom level for roads, like you really have to make those lines really, really thin, right? Because if they're too wide, they just sort of bleed into each other. You can't actually see them. So you have to keep them really thin for quite a while. And you know, only until you get to like higher zoom levels do you really have like a slightly like potentially lower data density and more like physical space to actually make these roads wider. And you also kind of want to give them width so that they have a presence on the street. Right, because they like if you're on the ground, they do take up space. Um, so I find that like for things like uh, line widths for roads, like you like it's really hard to style them linearly. Like you really want the change in the change in the width to be very very small in the beginning, and then to get bigger and bigger and like exponentially bigger at higher zoom levels. And so you can you can kind of do that with. Um, linear um, interpolation, you can like create a bunch of stops. So like those initial examples just had one stop at a low zoom level and one at a high zoom level. You could create a whole bunch of them and like kind of make this curve out of a bunch of you know, short straight lines. Um, and this is like basically like what I s spend a lot of time doing in Cardo CSS. I write a whole bunch of zoom level filters and it's basically like trying to emulate an exponential curve. So in uh, MapboxGL, you can create an exponential curve as easily as you can create a linear one. And so here, like in this, um, and this is actually the function that was in that animation for the road widths. Um, I assigned a single value for zoom level 8, one for zoom level 20, assigned like a value to describe how I wanted that curve to change. And you know, MapboxGL like, created all those values for me. Um, which is amazing because, like, I would spend ten times longer, basically creating that in Cardo CSS. Um, so I'm really excited about that. And you can change it, and the curve could be in the other direction too. You know, it could, the value could change more at lower zoom levels and less at higher zoom levels. Um, there's really a lot of like granularity in this. So, and it's just it's really fast to write, and it's um, in terms of like thinking about GL as like a like a GL map is like a single entity. It's kind of a more elegant and pre precise way of like defining like how you want a value to change over this like one object versus like thinking more singularly about every static map zoom level, if that makes sense. So it kind of like, um, I don't know, it just seems like it's really beautiful to me. And I'm not gonna talk too much about styling with different style classes. Um, and that kind of, there's a lot of potential with that and that kind of refers to like um, like kind of similar to CSS classes, you can write different styles in your uh, GL style object, and then using like the Mapbox GL APIs, you can then reference those classes. And so you know you can toggle things on with a button, or if, like direct selection, or like a lot of different things. Um, again, I'm not going to get into that too much, but the um, the kind of the way that you think about transitioning between different classes is really, really similar to how we would think about transitioning between different zoom levels. So I don't think there's actually anything conceptually too different about that in terms of design. And um, of course, the other big thing that I mentioned was that you can rotate a, a GL map. And I'm actually not going to talk too much about that either, only because um, so, the, so you know, Vlad kind of alluded to how, like how complicated this problem is about rotating and like label collision and all this stuff. Um, the upside to that is that a lot of the work has been done on the back end, so that when you actually come to style a map, like a lot of this just kind of automatically behaves the way that you think it should behave. And so, um, so really, like the one big thing to mention, I think, for rotation is that. Um, there's a rotation alignment property that doesn't exist in Cardo CSS that exists in GL that kind of describes 
how labels should be, like whether the label should be aligned to the map or the viewport, uh, the viewport being like your screen or the projector or whatever. So when you start rotating the map, do the, lo do the labels rotate with the map or do they stay upright because the screen is still upright, right? And so um, there's actually, um, so there's you know, two different types of labels. You can have labels on a line or labels on a point. And they, those actually have different default behaviors, it, which, um, which means that like, in most cases, they already behave the way you want them to. Um, sometimes they don't. Like For example, um, I have some like, highway shields up there. And those are labels along a line, but I wanted them to behave as points. So I had to change the way that it aligns. I had to say, OK, have those aligned to the screen and not the map. But in a lot of cases, they just work. And, um, um, and then as you can, you can also see, kind of like as the road labels rotate, they flip so that they're always upside, right side up. So again, like a lot of that work has just kind of been done, which is really nice. And you, yeah, it's really, it's like very similar to just styling and in Carter CSS. And so um, I don't know if any of you guys are kind of actively um, looking at converting any Carter CSS styles to Mapbox GL styles, or even if like you're not converting a single style per se, but if you've worked with Cardo CSS for a while and you're thinking about starting to work with Mapbox GL styles, um, here's just like a quick list of like, kind of like the big gotchas, I think, like when I started styling, like had I not known about these, I think it would have like, it would have been like, I don't know, this, these would like save me a lot of heartache, I think, knowing about these up front. So the first thing is that tile sizes are bigger in GL. Um, and by the way, these are mostly like technical, um, technical considerations. So tile sizes, um, so like a 256 pixel tile in Cardo CSS is equivalent to a 512 tile in Mapbox GL. And um, that's basically because a GL renderer um, is sort of, it's more performant when it can make fewer draw calls. And so if the tile is larger, you can make fewer draw calls. And so that was kind of a decision that um, developers at Mapbox made, but I'm like, as, as far as I know, that's kind of a decision pretty much everyone working in GL has been making with map tiles. So even though 256 has kind of been a standard, um, it's 512 in Mapbox GL. And so that means, that kind of means two things to consider when you're styling a map. One is that since they're 512, not 256, uh, those tiles are four times bigger in GL, meaning the map is four times bigger. So here's zoom level 10 in Cardo CSS, the exact same style, zoom level 10 in GL, it's bigger. Um, and, um, but also because each integer zoom level is four times bigger than the one before it, that actually means that it's a pretty easy um, it's pretty easy to convert because zoom level 10 in Cardo CSS is just zoom level 9 in Mapbox GL. But so like if you're, like if you're literally converting styles from Cardo to GL, then um, that's one of the things where like if you're porting over values, you would have to bump down all the zoom levels. Um, and I think, like, I think I didn't know that for like a month or something <laughs> when I first started styling. Um, the other thing, um, okay, yeah, and so that, that is that first consideration that if you have zoom level dependent styles, you need to adjust. Um, but the other thing about that is if you're using the same data source in like a Cardo CSS style and then you use that data source in Mapbox GL, suddenly, you know, the, it's not, the data is not as dense because the tiles are bigger. Um, and that's just something to like, I think, think about out front. Um, when you're styling with GL, that like, did, did you create a data source that was intended for a 256 pixel tile? You know, maybe you need more data in each tile. Um, just a really quick one. Um, some text properties in GL use relative units. Um, and basically by that, I mean like M's. So I, where an M is equal to the font size. And, and that's actually like a really, really great thing. This is really, um, I found this has saved me a lot of time. And in a lot of cases, um, I don't even have to like write a function or like change the value in any way um, across different zoom levels because it's already being proportionally changed. Um, so that's awesome, but also to keep in mind since that's not true in Cardo CSS, if you're converting 
um, values, like there's not necessarily a direct parallel. You'll probably have to hand convert them or, or just be happy with like an approximate. Um, third, um, all images in GL um, need to be sprites. And um, so Carta CSS, um, as you guys know, um, supports SVGs and pings um, for both, for like patterns, markers, shields, everything, um, which is pretty great. Um, but um, at least currently in Mapbox GL, like we really need like um, bitmap sprites. Um, so that's how it's working now, although um, like disclaimer, I think we're literally changing this this week or next week. Um, but regardless, there is um, this consideration because the GPU like really needs um, either it needs bitmaps and like it really works better with bigger images, which is why we use like the Atlas and not individual images. Um, so I don't know how much of that um, is going to change on the back end. Certainly for like users, like um, if we do like keep ha if we do keep having sprites, we would have some kind of automation so that like literally like as you're styling a map, you don't have to keep recreating sprites. Um, so the last thing um, I wanted to mention quickly is currently you can only use about four font stacks in the style before it starts to like slow down your map. Um, and that's because in GL, like every font stack is an HTTP request and those slow down your map. Um, the upside, though, with the way that um, GL renders font stacks is that you can stack like as many fonts as you want in a single stack. Um, so, um, whereas in Cardo CSS, like I try not to put three fonts in a stack or more than three fonts because that kind of slows down the map. In GL, it doesn't matter at all. So, this is really great for language support. You could have like ten different fonts, you know, for specific um, Unicode ranges, and it wouldn't like slow down your map at all. Um, so I kind of, um, oh, I think I'm like pretty much out of time, but I really just wanted to quickly mention, um, so we've gotten several like questions through like our support channels in Mapbox um, about are we gonna create a migration script from Cardo CSS to Mapbox GL style object? Um, quick answer is probably no. Um, I hope like you can probably, I'm sure you could do it and like you could create a valid Mapbox GL style object, but you know, even just like the few things I kind of talked about today, like you can probably see that there's just a lot of considerations in GL that don't even exist in Cardo. So if you just, you know, migrated a map, it really wouldn't take advantage of a lot of the really cool aspects of GL. So, um, so I personally hand migrate everything myself and um, just doing that, I can see like how much um, extra work and design consideration I'm putting into them. So. Um, we're probably not going to do that. If any of you guys have thought about it or tried to do it, I'd love to talk to you about it because it's a really interesting problem, but uh, we're probably not going to do it. Um, yeah, and thanks. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention, so um, as you can probably tell, I'm not a developer at all. Um, I'm a designer. If you have any questions about Mapbox GL, um, of course, you can talk to this guy who just did a talk on Mapbox GL. Um, also, uh, Dane um, has done a lot of the work on Cardo CSS and Mapnik, so if you have any questions about kind of how that works, um, feel free to talk to him. And he has a talk later today too about vector tiles. Um, and of course, you can come find me. I'm Nikki Bluegash on Twitter. And um, I think that's it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>